Hello and welcome. My name is Nanya. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands. And it has been three weeks since my last knitting podcast. I try to make a podcast every other week, but this time I didn't manage to do that. Um, so now I'm here, three weeks later. My knitting podcast is called Blij dat ik brei. It means happy to be knitting, because knitting brings me joy. And let's see, uh, today I want to uh, make a podcast without editing too much, because I couldn't bring myself to make a video, um, let alone uh, having to edit it. Uh, and now I have to cough. <laughs> So, maybe there will be some coughs in this video. Uh, it's just gonna be the way it, it is. Uh, I usually divide up my uh, podcast into uh, three sections. Past, present and future. In the past, I tell you about uh, a knitting project I made in the past. Um, last time, I finished something that I forgot to mention. I don't think we have to mention everything we knit necessarily on a knitting podcast, but uh, I do like to show you different kind of kind of projects uh, because I find that inspiring. If someone uh, makes a small object that I think oh, that would be nice for so and so, I get inspired to make it. So. Uh, I'll show you a picture of a little thing I knit for my niece. It was a bookmark, Lavender's bookmark, I think. Yeah. Uh, designed by Lizzie, Lizzie Ro Rose Knits. And I made it in uh, some yarn that was in my heirloom stash. So the stash that I inherited from my late mother. I'll show you a picture of it. It's a very simple knit. I think I finished it within an hour. Um, it's cute with three hearts. Um, so I might make more of those. Because the uh, bookmark is a nice little gift. Let's see. Another thing from the past is this t shirt that I'm wearing. I'm wearing it on top of a green uh, long sleeve t shirt that I would normally not wear underneath this, but. Later today I'm going to go to my CSA and take care of the chickens. So I'm wearing an old shirt. <coughs> when I go um, get the eggs from the chickens, I will of course not wear my BFL silk hat knitted t-shirt. This is the Elfie or Elfie uh, designed by Astrid Schramm. And um, it's a t-shirt with a, a contiguous sleeve uh, with a striped pattern. I think it's it's a, uh, it is a pattern that I noticed early on in my knitting career, and I really uh, liked it. And it took me ages to finally uh, make it. The of course, I never swatched for it. <laughs> I think this um, lighter color is one of the first hand dyed skeins of yarn that I got. I got them for a birthday from my husband um, well, about six years ago, I think. And it's snail yarn in BFL silk in the colorway Mint Pop. I'm absolutely sure you cannot get that anymore so <laughs> too bad the dark one is Lindewol BFL, BFL in Amazon Neat. I think you can get that still uh, Lindewol is a small dyer uh, in the north of the Netherlands and I run uh, into her on local in local fairs so that's where I got this to contrast with my BFL silk skein mint pop. Uh, it goes from light to dark, so that's uh, like the pattern suggests. 
uh, the striping to go. It's an easy pattern uh, to follow. I enjoyed it. I was a fairly new knitter when I started it. The pattern is absolutely fine, but if you don't do a gauge swatch, you might have to knit it a couple of times to get it to the right size. So that's what happened to me. And I was also uh, running out of yarn or not, I don't know. I think I wanted to use as much as I could from the light color because I thought it was so pretty. Um, and so I started with the larger size for the stripes and make it long. At that time I didn't know yet that superwash yarn grows in length. And so it did grow a little. And I thought it was a bit too long, but over time it pops back up a little bit. And I prefer my sweaters to be well past uh, my belt or my waist. So this was a successful knit. Um, and that's it for the pre uh, past projects. In the present, so I had to go get my finished object of this week. I finished it yesterday and blocked it, sort of. I'm very happy with this. <laughs> it's uh, the Loot Llama hoodie. I knitted contrasting cuffs, llama on here, and then there's a hoodie with green ro rope. In the band, it's a very nice hoodie. I used the pattern by Le Garçon, um, the medium bearable hoodie, size 16, to make a hoodie like this. I followed the pattern exactly. So there's basically a buttonhole in a And I can pull it down like this. It's that's great fun. I stitched this Lut Lama. A duplicate stitched it. And yeah, I'm very, very such a fun sweater. And it was so much work. The stitching and especially all of the ends to weave in. But I'm very happy, very happy with this finished object. And <clears throat> it's knit completely in acrylic yarn, uh, Scheepjes Color Crafter, uh, different colors. And then the white, the black, and the dark grey on the arrow and the mouth piece uh, is from my heirloom stash. So the re recipient's grandma's stash basically. So that was nice to add that as well. With the black yarn I, I wanted to use that but it's much stiffer yarn than the Scheepjes Color Crafter so it was a little bit uh, more difficult to make neat, neat stitches with it. I think the softer the yarn and the more easily it flattens, the better it is to use for a duplicate stitch. If you have a round yarn that keeps it, its shape, um, you get like, you can see uh, that there is a little bit, little bit like this piece is not the neatest. That's well. Now we're out of focus. Hi. Well, anyway, I'm gonna give this to my nephew tomorrow because uh, then we'll celebrate his birthday. And yeah, it's just this makes me very happy. <laughs> the pattern I used was 
a chart that I bought online. It's a, um, a pixel chart, so it's uh, based on squares. And knit stitches are not squares. Knit stitches are basically, they are more wide than they are long. So this, this makes the llama a little bit more chubby than the original pattern. It's still a lot of fun. Uh, so it doesn't matter in this case, but uh, the pattern has in the pattern it has a longer neck, and this piece is yeah, it's just a more skinny longer llama, and that is just the nature of knit stitches. And if you uh, convert a pixel chart to uh, yeah, duplicate stitch. You uh, you get everything to widen out. So that was my uh, finished object. I've got three projects on the go right now. The oldest project is my um, pucker socks. I've shown them many times. They are close to being done. This is the sock that has the most progress yeah I cannot really work on it right now because I'm working I've been working on a deadline for the Lut Lama sweater and I've also got a test knit on the go so that needs uh, attention right now because the day, uh, due date is at the end of the month and there's a lot of stitches in the sleeves. I'll show you my test knit sweater. It's a big one, it has a lot of ease, 20 centimeters as per the pattern. I've knit the neckband and one sleeve and now I want to do a fitting session with my sister because this sweater is for my sister um, to decide how should I continue or when should I start the cuff and how long should the cuff be but that, that's not a lot of work I can finish two cuffs in a, in a day that's easy and this is the progress I have on the other sleeve. The sleeve is also knit just like the back of the sweater in reverse stocking stitch. And I decided to knit the sleeves inside out to make them knit, knitted instead of purling. So I, I just work like this. Let's see if I can. This is the outside and the right side of the sweater that you see and I just knit. This is how I knit. Continental. I bought those needles for especially for the sleeves. They are higher higher interchangeable tips. The short tips. Um, the steel tips so that they are blunter than the high high sharps because I don't need sharp needles to knit a sweater 3.75 millimeters and it says it's a US 5 um, I also bought a new cord that is on the other side it's a, a green high high cord with high high end stoppers uh, and the green cord is much more flexible than the blue one that you see here. It's less flexible. So I prefer the green one. So, um, but I've got blue ones. Uh, but I don't like the high higher cords for Magic Loop. And I think those uh, yellow ones that are the new ones that they replace the blue ones with are better because they are more flexible 
but I haven't done a lot of magic loop on them yet. I don't need to do magic loop for the sleeves because I managed to go all the way down to oh, this, the sleeve tapers. And here, here there are less than half of the stitches that you start with. But I still managed to knit in around on the 40 centimeter needles with the short tips. So this one. And I prefer to do that than to knit with magic loop. <coughs> but it does cramp my hand, my left hand, when I knit with these short tips, it hurts my hand. So I cannot just sit and knit the whole sleeve in one sitting, because then I get a cramp here. I don't have that when I use regular tips. This is my uh, needle case that I got with the set that I orig originally bought. That is the, the always fall out. So I have long sharps and short steels. So the short tips are blunt and the long tips are sharp. And then uh, over here we have my, the thin needles are Chagu mini twist interchangeable. Um, and those I use for socks. And that's basically all the needles I use so i'm trying to take it a little bit more slow with the podcast because last time i told you about my zweig, zweig and i really love that sweater and i said i did but i forgot to mention the yarn or i and no i, I forgot to mention the name of the pattern um so i don't thinking about that. I didn't say anything about the designer name or the yarn that I'm using for this. So it's good that I took a moment to just knit a couple of stitches and get my uh, thoughts back in order. The yarn is Kremke Soul Wool Reborn Jeans. This is the brand and I got this project back with my purchase. This is the yarn. Um, it's made from recycled jeans and recycled plastic bottles. 25% uh, plastic bottles and 75% jeans. No dyeing. So it's, yeah, it's just sustainable yarn. And it's really nice and soft, very drapey. I think for this design, it's really nice, the drapiness. But when I knit the neckband, the design is, by the way, ter the tarragon sweater, designed by uh, Claire, Claire Mountain. And um, yeah, I. I've knit the body in a US size 5 or 3.75 millimeter needles. I knit the neckline on 3.25 millimeter needles. And it doesn't, it's too white and sloppy. And that's also the result of this yarn not having a lot of memory, no stretch. Um, and that works for the rest of the design. But I hope that I finish this sleeve on time so I can rip back the neckline and knit it on 2.75 millimeter needles. And uh, those are very tiny needles, but I think the neckline would look much nicer. I did do a good job on the bind off. It's a tubular bind off. And that matches the alternating cable cast on very nicely and I'm doing those details because it's in the pattern and I'm test knitting and I like to do that to 
put in just the a little bit of extra effort. It's going to be a little bit annoying to rip back because you have to do that first row manually. You just can't start frogging, ripping it back. Rip it, rip it. So. This is the only project I'm knitting on at the moment uh, until um, I'm at the stage that I need my sister to look at the length of the sleeves because of the deadline and I, uh, I'm really enjoying it but not so much the sleeves because it hurts my fingers and yeah I would like it to be done so I can start new things I did start one other thing that is in my Mana Cori Creations project bag that could, I love this. I like a drawstring project bags. I'm using this yarn. It's Atelier Zitron in Trekking Sexbach. It's a superwash wool with polyamide sock yarn. And I started a pair of pants. Doesn't look like pants yet. Oh, it, it smells like lavender. I got this at the shop that I bought it, the yarn. And uh, yeah, I just threw it in a project bag with the wool. Um, so now it smells like lavender. Yeah, what can I say? I cast this on. Uh, the This is the Thick Thin Line Joggers by Brianna... Let's see. Uh, Brianna Lupino. And it calls for... What's the word? Provisional cast on. I'm not a fan of the provisional cast on unless it's absolutely necessary. Like when you need a seamless uh, join. I don't think you need a seamless join for this project because you pick up again and then you need a, a waistband. And I'm fine with picking up the waistband instead of using the provisional cast on. Maybe they chose it because it's stretchy. But I am very capable of casting on very <laughs> loosely. Or not loosely, just stretchy. I'm thinking how can I show you the way I cast on. You have two strands and let's see. this is how I cast on. Um, let's see. This is how you make it stretchy by leaving space between the two stitches. If I leave a lot of space, that's where the stretch is in the if you like pull it tight and then the stitches are very close together you get a tight cast on if you leave a long space so the more space you leave between the stitches the stretchier stretchier it will be and your stitches the first row of stitches will still be very neat because they are the size they have to be on the knitting needle. That's what I do and then I'm very confident that there will be enough stretch um, for a waistband and um, also a little bit of structure in the garment because there will be a little ridge and uh, yeah. I like that. So if it's not absolutely necessary I will not do a professional cast. 
and just yeah have my own opinion this is uh, basically like raglan increasing uh, but for pants and I like this increase because it's done with a slip stitch it looks nice and you only increase to one side so it's important to do the make one left make one right correctly and other than that it's just easy to start up I did realize I don't know why I didn't before because pants are basically sleeves but very long and yeah knitting sleeves is not my favorite thing <laughs> well we'll see I uh, cast this on on April 2nd I think to join a knit along um, the host of the knit along was disappointed by the project due to various things but the final straw was that the cast on was twisted and then you put all this effort into doing a provisional cast on and then it ends up being twisted I will get kind of pissed off as well so I can see that she doesn't want to knit on it anymore and um, <clears throat> but another thing is with uh, knitting pants I don't it's not a common thing that knitters do knitting pants um, and it just makes you focus on your body in a different way we are used to measuring our bust circumference or upper bust or, um, and waist but with this project you needed uh, a waist uh, and hips and leg circumference and then you have all these charts where you fit in and then you have to swatch and uh, and then make a decision on what size to cast on so that and we're not really used to that right uh, measuring our legs and our hips um, so um, I did do that and then I found that I did not fit on the chart <laughs> so uh, basically I'm too skinny and I'm not that skinny I used to be 10 kilograms lighter like 10 years ago so I don't know some things uh, I fit in the chart at size one and other measures are not on the chart and uh, of course you cannot accommodate any sort of uh, not everybody um, but I think we vary as people so much in our proportions from hips and waist to legs um, you can have a little bit of chubby legs and have a small waist and you can have a big waist and skinny legs there's so much variety so uh, the designer does say it's best to uh, go for the waist size because that's where this uh, there's a lot of stretch there and it should not be too wide because of course then your pants fall off so that's what I did. I picked uh, my waist side and that was on the chart. So I'm knitting size one, but I did not swatch because I think swatching has a dark side. If you swatch, swatches lie and then you do all the math and all the work and uh, you end up uh, wanting it to be a certain thing and it doesn't happen and yeah I just rather spend my time knitting and starting the project and then seeing what will happen maybe later on do a fitting and when worse comes to worst I'd have to just rip it back out all of it and I don't think I need to do that because um, my gauge tends to be a little bit wider uh, that's also a thing in the pattern the gauge they recommend is a little bit see-through 
and I don't agree with that. So then I knit a, a little bit tighter to have a good fabric. But yeah, then the gauge of course is different. But I'm going with stretch. Knitting has a lot of stretch uh, and I think uh, it will it will fit, it will stretch around my butt. <laughs> it will be fine. I just don't uh, think that swatching for a project that is so new to me, like a, a pants, that would just make me more insecure, like uh, having to calculate everything over again because you're gonna try and knit with a different gauge and the measurements are not really, uh, not all of them are fit, uh, adhering to your body. It's just so much work and uh, it would make me insecure. So I'm just going to, uh, I just did the math for the waist circumference. That's basically it. That's what I could have said and saved you all the babbling. But yeah, here we are. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I told myself I could not uh, edit this podcast as much as last time. And uh, I think last time I, I seemed quite coherent, but there was a lot of editing going on. <laughs> and uh, usually I... Uh, make subtitles so but I didn't get to that either for the last uh, episode so I'm sorry if you uh, need the subtitles there are uh, there are automatically generated subtitles but whenever you speak about a yarn name or a designer yeah, YouTube tends to butcher that, so... And then I speak with an accent, and sometimes I say Dutch words, so... It's... Uh, what I do is I read through the manual, uh, the automatic... Uh, subtitles, and then I fix them. But it's not a lot of work, but I uh, just didn't... Have the headspace to do it for the last one, and yeah, so I want to do uh, a little bit less editing. I didn't put on makeup this time to see how I feel about that because I want the threshold for me to podcast to be low, uh, otherwise, um, I cannot keep up with my own schedule, like once every two weeks. And I don't have to, if there's nothing to, to say or show, uh, I won't. Um, but I had enough to show and talk about. I just uh, don't feel like doing all the work around it. Because uh, I've been becoming more active outside. We started up the uh, vegetable garden. We we have um, raised beds uh, that are basically is square foot gardening. So you have a uh, square foot and you grow uh, different crops next to each other. So I have radishes, bok choy, uh, snow peas, uh, carrots, what else do we have? Nothing that... Uh, marigolds... Um, I don't know the English words for most things that I plant. But so you have a, a couple of square foot next to each other and you ha mix the crops. And every time you harvest, you put a, a different kind of plant in that little plot. And that allows you to grow a lot of different uh, vegetables with a lot of... Uh, there's a... <clears throat> you get quite a bit of harvest for a, fa a small family in a small space 
because every time you have it you can just add some uh, plant food, manure, compost and grow another crop. So you continue from February February to uh, November you can in the Netherlands you can harvest crops from your garden. <coughs> Let's see. Then the section future. I got a late birthday gift because we were visiting family in Eastern at Eastern that we didn't get to see before because of COVID basically. COVID and other flu things going on on either side and I got this it was on my wish list and I really like this it's a uh, shopple the same brand that makes the sauber ball these are sauber perlen and it's basically a fade so yeah it's very soft it's um, I think Peruvian Highland wool it is superwash. They often put a thing like this. It's it's a knitted heart, and then it says, "Stricken kan süchtig machen." Knitting can be addictive, so beware. This is a little bit similar as. Um, the kind of warnings you have to put on cigarette packs in the in the European Union. And with this I can just uh, see I've got seven balls and I got 14 rows of color work chart then every uh, color is two rounds like that. So yeah I'm excited to do that. I think the project will have to wait. I will need another main color. I'm thinking about a uh, dark gray. I also got this skein of Hillesburg Ask, and that looks nice together as well. But this is very different wool. This is a uh, yeah, this is superwash, this isn't, um, this is basically a, a thick sport weight and this is a fingering weight. So uh, I could combine it and I like the colors but um, this one is Melet Bla Lila, um, so it's blue lila. blue lilac and yeah I think I want more of these and need a sweater in this color just this color like a cabled sweater maybe but I'm not sure yet because I think cable sweaters look nice in lighter colors so you see the cables I don't know if this is light enough so I could use this to swatch and yeah order more from Trollable in the Netherlands because they stock Ask and that's where this is coming from so yeah that's what I'm gonna do in the future use this yarn for the sun ray and find a nice pattern for this yarn then uh, I plan on knitting um, a lot of short sleeve, no sleeve, summer tops and I'm looking forward to that because I've been knitting sleeves quite a bit and now I've got pants on the go and socks. It's all small circumference and I'm getting a little bit tired of that <laughs> tube knitting so I'm very much looking forward to knitting summer garments and one that I I've been wanting to make and my husband gave me the pattern 
not on my last birthday, but the birthday before, that is uh, the amazing, amazing tea by Alpha Nits. And uh, I'll show you the sweater. I hope that I figured out how to edit, like put the picture here and not all over. So we'll see, maybe you won't see my face, but maybe you do, and it's in the corner, like... <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's the Amazing Tea uh, by Alpha Nits. And I've got yarn. I bought yarn uh, because uh, I got the pattern, and I was excited to go make it. It's very much in the color scheme of the original sample, but a different yarn. I'm going to use Drops Bell. And that is a viscose and cotton blend that I've worked bef with before. Uh, so I think that will might possibly be the first thing that I cast on after I finish my chest knit. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you sometime soon. Bye bye.